Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic, and this week we are heading to Pioneer to play a super cheap deck that combines together three of my favorite things, Hollow One, Cycling, and God Pharaoh's Gift, with this super sweet Cycling Gift Brew from Thigh Shuffler. So let's talk about the deck, what it's trying to do, jump into some games, and see it in action. Looking to pick up some sweet sweet, sweet Double Masters 2022 reprints, why prices are cheap? Well, you can snag them all from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, by heading over to cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. So here is our cycling gift deck from Thigh Shuffler with one small change to the mana base to make sure that it would fit in under the budget. And this deck is pretty sweet. So we've seen cycling decks in the past, in standard and a little bit in other formats. And this one starts off looking a lot like any other cycling deck. We got a ton of one mana cycling from Cast Out and Wing Shepherd down to Flourishing Fox and Dranith Healer. And these cards are really the foundation of our deck. They're in our deck because they cycle, and that supports a bunch of our powerful payoffs, but it's also worth mentioning they kind of support each other. Like Flourishing Fox is a one mana cycler, but it's also a cycling payoff. If we play it as a creature and then we cycle cards, it gets really big and can take over games, or Dranith Healer can gain his life, Dranith Stinger can burn our opponent out of the game. But these cards are the core of our deck, all these one mana cyclers. So why is our deck overloaded with cyclers? And there's really one, two, three big payoffs for this deck. First off, we got some discard matter stuff. Flame Blade Adept in Hollow One. Flame Blade Adept, we play as a one drop, we cycle some cards, it gets pretty big, gets in for a bunch of damage. Nice little aggro one drop in a cycling deck. And then Hollow One cares about us cycling or discarding cards to reduce its mana cost. So if we can cycle two cards in a turn, we get a four, four for one mana. And if we can cycle three cards in a turn, we can get a Hollow One for free. So most often we're playing Hollow Ones on turn three, because we need to cycle a few times. Uh, so it's not like modern where you can burning in Korean just like play a bunch of hollow ones on turn one. That's not gonna happen in Pioneer, but still free four fours on turn three is pretty powerful. So that's payoff number one. Payoff number two, the same one we saw in standard, Zenith Flare. Zenith Flare, an absurd burn spell. Four mana deals X damage to any target and we gain X life for X is the number of cards with cycling in our graveyard. So we spend the early game cycling, pretty easy to get six, eight, 10 cycling cards in the graveyard. and then just burn our opponent out of the game with a couple of Zenith Flares. Also, the life gain is really, really huge to stabilize against aggro. Then we have my favorite part of the deck, and the reason I really wanted to play this deck, which is God Pharaoh's Gift. So the first part of this deck looks a lot like a standard cycling deck, but now we get our sweet Pioneer upgrade that was never available in standard. Gate to the Afterlife, God Pharaoh's Gift. So God Pharaoh's Gift, the biggest payoff, seven mana artifact. At the beginning of combat in our turn, we can exile a creature from our graveyard and get a four, four zombie with haste it's a copy of that creature. And then Gate to the Afterlife lets us find God Pharaoh's Gift and cheat it into play. If we can get six creatures in our graveyard, we can sack Gate to the Afterlife for two mana and tutor God Pharaoh's Gift directly on the battlefield. So what this means is we can do all of our cycling, which we wanna do anyway to support Zenith Flare. And we wanna do anyway to get Hollow One on the battlefield and to grow our Flourishing Foxes and Flame Blade Adepts. And then we are also filling our graveyard to Gate to the Afterlife and a God Pharaoh's Gift. And since we're cycling like crazy, we should cycle into these cards eventually, hopefully pretty early in the game, and then we just start getting all of our cyclers back, is four fours, and they take over the game. So that is the main plan of the deck. As far as the mana base, pretty simple stuff, bunch of dual lands, bunch of basic lands. In the sideboard, we get Jengatha as our companion, because it's pretty much a free roll. All of our stuff was mono-colored or one-colored mana symbol anyway. So just kind of a free roll, five, five. Bunch of removal for aggro with some life gain, some graveyard hate, some combo hate. Sorcerer Spyglass is our main answer to control, trying to like shut down a Planeswalker, and that is Cycle Cycling Hollow One gift shenanigans for Pioneer. That's our budget magic deck for this week. So let's jump into some games and see, can this plan work? Can the weird hybrid of cycling and Hollow One and God Pharaoh's Gift and Zenith Flare to take over the game, can it actually compete in Pioneer? Let's find out. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll be back in a bit with a wrap up. Budget magic time. We are playing some cycling God Pharaoh's Gift in Pioneer this week. Well, I mean, I think the Fox is probably gonna die, but we're gonna cast it. Looks like we're up against Boros. Or it looks like we're up against, uh, is it? Probably Ledger, Strider, Delver, Phoenix stuff. Opponent, discards a Phoenix. Steam vents untapped. Ledger Shredder. Well, play this on white. Play the Flourishing Fox. 
start the cycle. Well, we'll see. We do have a Zenith Flare, which is good. Steam beds for our opponent, untapped. But our opponent's off to a pretty fast start. Pieces of the puzzle. Yeah, that's that's a treasure cruise, and also. Well, that's a gate to the afterlife. It's a treasure cruise and also a uh, double arc light phoenix, which is pretty bad for us. Um, well, oh, how do we do this? Play flame blade adapt. Cycle the shepherd. Oh, uh, can't cycle that. All right, get in, hit you for three. All right, opponent goes to 30. I mean, ah, it doesn't look like we're in that bad of shape at the moment, but when our opponent, yeah, goes like spell, spell, treasure cruise, get back two phoenixes, grow the ledger shredder, then I think we probably just die. Ledger shredder, connives away a land. Yeah, you never want to see two, two phoenixes in the graveyard already, so now our opponent gets to draw a new hand. I, I've mentioned this before, but definitely strongly disagree with Wizards uh, being our theory of keeping the treasure cruises legal. I think treasure cruise is just way more busted than, I mean, expressive iteration is busted, but treasure cruise is also equally busted. Wow, opponent's gonna stay on defense, interesting. So opponent stays on defense, has a handful of cards. Now let's, I mean, cycle a Ceridon, grow the dorks into a flame blade. I mean, play the mountain, gate to the afterlife. And I think we just push with both. I mean, if our opponent kills them, we get to loot and turn on the gate to the afterlife and get a God Pharaoh's gift going and see. I mean, we also have Zenith Flare, which is slowly Becoming relevant. Wow, opponent's just gonna, I mean, they gotta kill stuff, right? You don't often see two arc lights come back and not attack. All right, opponent blocks and blocks. We gotta assume the phoenixes are coming back anyway, so I think we just kill Ledger Shredder. So kill the Ledger Shredder, the fox dies, we get to loot. We'll discard a flame blade and pass the turn. We are doing a lot of lands now, which is awkward. Opponent, Ottawa, Ledger Shredder returns. Strangle to kill the flame blade. Oh my god, triple arc light phoenix. All right, well, we gain a bit of life. We loot, we discard battlefield forge. So many lands. Opponent considers. So the arc lights are coming back. <laughs> and ops. Oh, we could really use some cycling cards here. Opponent gets back the phoenixes. Gets in. Well, we drop to 12. We untap. Oh my goodness. Gate to the afterlife. Get a God Pharaoh's gift, play the land. We've drawn so, so many lands here. God Pharaoh's gift gets back Wing Shepherd. Attack for four. Unclear if we can even stay alive though. We have massively flooded this game. Well, they take it to seven. Strategic planning. That one's just so good at digging through their deck. Treasure crews, Galvanic iterate, like they're just, they're so, so good at that. Dead to a removal spell. Lightning Axe, and we scoop it up. Well, I mean, that was kind of close considering we just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight lands on, on the top of our deck is, oh boy, that's a high number. That is a high, high number. Soul Guide Lanterns can come in, and that's probably it, honestly. I wonder if we just have too many lands. Maybe we should just cut some lands. With so much cycling in the deck, I feel like 20, 20 just might be too much. We get to play first. We'll reveal Jingatha. So this is free hollow one on turn three. Kinda slow. Well, Battlefield Forge, go. Spire Bluff Canal and passes. Well, let's cycle into even more lands. Well, play the land past the turn. I mean, I guess we just cycle into a hollow one next turn. About it ups. Untaps, River Glide Pathway, and the Ledger Shredder, I'm sure. There's there's always a, there's never not a Ledger Shredder on turn three. Opponent passes, even more lands. Well, let's cycle Wing Shepherd. Let's cycle Wing Shepherd. Let's cycle Dranith Stinger. Play a Hollow One past the turn. Up out into Pathway, and Strategic Planning. Well, not two Arclight Phoenixes this time, so that's something. Lightning Axe kills a hollow one. Goes attacking. Do we play the fox or do we just cycle it? Oh, we're probably better off cycling it. All right, let's cycle the healer 
into a land. So I go the fox. Actually, you know what? Let's let's change a plan. So let's grab Jingatha. Not especially helpful, but it is. I mean, it's a five five. Treasure cruise draws a new hand. Stormcaller of Coast and strategic planning connives with Ledger Shredder. Finds a phoenix, gets back the phoenix. Oh, does not get back the phoenix. Hits us with the ledger shredder. We draw a flame blade adept. I'll play the land. Play Jagatha. Pass the turn. Pieces of the puzzle. Finds an arc light and a bunch of removal. Removal spell number one. Yeah, so now the two arc lights come back. And our Jagatha dies. And yeah, I think we might be dead. An opponent gets and hits us out of five. Well, cycle of fox, cycle of fox, play the land. I mean, this is all we can really do. I'm not even sure if it's enough. Zenith flare you. Go back up to 13, pass the turn. Ah, oh, we're short of winning though. We don't have a way to actually close it out. An opponent, more pieces of the puzzle. Hits a bunch of removal. And. Tap land, opponent, perhaps leaving up a counter. Hits us for a bunch. I mean, the question's gonna be, can we resolve Zenith Flare? That's the real question. Down to four. Ledger Shredder. Ah, oh, we're gonna be like a point of damage away from lethal here, which is oh, so close. Zenith Flare, well, cycle a Stinger. Cycle a Fox, play the land. Zenith Flare, pass the turn. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I mean, the Zenith Flares have kept us around temporarily. Opponent plays the land and pieces of the puzzle, double connives, discards a rending volley, hits some spells. Plays a consider. Opponent's just trying to hit a Phoenix by the looks. Lightning Axe. They can hit us to one, but it doesn't quite kill us. Opponent goes to combat. Hits us with everything. Well, do they have a counter? That is the question. Play the land and Zenith Flare you. Oh my goodness, all right. <laughs> well, sometimes you just cast Zenith Flares. Well, we got there. We got there, we got there. Somehow, some way. Do we want to change anything else? Not really. Hey, yeah, let's run it back. Run it back. Only drew their deck, but not enough to beat a Zenith Flare, apparently. Uh, well, Jingatha revealed. Pwn's on the play this game. Oh, tap land, eh? Well, we're gonna keep. Would rather be starting with an untap land, but. Clifftop retreat, go. Upon and pathway and passes. Well, let's cycle a Ceridon. Oh, God. Okay. Well, this is bad news. Bad, 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 bad news. Well, I mean, maybe cutting those lands is gonna end up punishing us. In theory, like most games, we've hit a ridiculous number of lands thanks to our cycling, but not happening this game. Opponent's also missing lands. Let's cycle a Wing Shepherd and not hit a land. Well, at this point, I think we're just unlucky that we have uh, seen this many cards without hitting a land. Oh my God, it's a tap land. All right, well, cycle Dranith Healer. Draw another God Pharaoh's Gift, play another tap land past the turn. About it. Strategic planning to hit their land drop. And finds it, Steam Vents. Well, we will cycle a Stinger. Cycle a Stinger. We do not hit a land. <laughs> okay, this point is just a little absurd. About it. Hard cast in Arclay Phoenix. Goes attacking. Well, we will cycle a healer. And play a Soul Guide Lantern to snipe the Arc Light Phoenix. Wow, two lands in 19 cards. Hi, ay, ay, ay. The sad thing is, we'd be in pretty good shape with how our opponent's hand is played out. All right, another Treasure Cruise. We'd be in pretty good shape if it if we had mana. If we were not so brutally mana screwed, opponent gets and hits us. Got to discard a bunch of cards of hand size. We dropped to fourteen. Well, you know we're gonna hit a huge string of lands at some point. We will cycle a Ceradon, not a land. We will cycle a Flourishing Fox. Wow, we're gonna have to calculate this one. Now we're getting to the incredibly improbable stage. Two lands out at twenty-two cards. Definitely got to calculate this one. Opponent going to abrade the Soul Guide Lantern. Oh, well, exile your graveyard. 
opponent going to fill the graveyard looking for some phoenixes do they find them not yet plays oh haul the storm giants that is an issue goes attacking down to 11. oh my god it's a land okay so two out of 22 remember that number because we're definitely gonna definitely gonna pull up the calculator here cycle zenith flare cycle cast out cycle Dranus stinger play a hollow one Pass the turn. Opponent kills the hollow one. It's us with the Hall of the Storm Giants. Going to one. So we need to top deck a land here in Zenith Flare to have any hope. All right, we do hit a land. Well, one, two, three, four, Zenith Flare you. Go back up to 14. Not dead yet. Pass the turn. Opponent. Ledger Shredder. Ops. The thing is, our opponent probably has counters now, and we cannot pay for any of them. There's another Arc Light. Is this a, oh my, she's a treasure cruise number three. Oh my God, but they tap down. Oh my goodness, we're gonna win. We're gonna win. We're gonna win. <laughs> two lands and 22 cards against the best deck in the format. And this username is the person who has the most trophies in the format and we're gonna win. <laughs> wow. Zenith Flare is a messed up magic card. I imagine that's about as bad as our deck can run. And we got there somehow. <laughs> All right, we gotta we gotta check this. 60 cards, we have 18 lands, 22. We drew two. That is exceedingly unlikely that we draw two. 99.928 that we're gonna draw two or more lands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 99, yeah. Very, very unlikely. Very, very less than two lands. 0. 0.00627. I guess that shows the power of janking people out with the deck, though, because that was like the bottom, I don't even know, less than 1% of games. Like incredibly, incredibly, incredibly awkward running for our deck. And we still ended up winning with the power of Zenith Flares. So yeah, all right, sweet. <laughs> just how we drew it up, just how we drew it up. Budget magic time. We are playing some cycling God Pharaoh's gift. Ooh, we're gonna, we're gonna keep this. Uh, we'll see if this is fast enough, but this is a hand that could potentially be multiple hollow ones on turn three. As long as we hit any cycler, we can cycle a fox, cycle a fox. I mean, maybe there's some argument to running out the foxes, but I really want the hollow ones. Opponent, hateful Eidolon, Zenith Flare. Well, play the land. Oh, this is, might be an issue. We're gonna play a fox. <laughs> we're gonna trust that. We're gonna trust that we cycle into cyclers. Opponent, yeah, I'm gonna shrine. Sentinel's eyes. Oh, jeez, ethereal. Okay, I think we might be dead. Opponent gets and hits us. I don't think any number of hollow ones actually save us from this. All right, we whiff, hit a God Pharaoh's gift, we cycle into Wing Shepherd, which we cycle into Desert Ceridon, which we cycle into. Wing Shepherd. Wow. We have three four fours on tier three, and it is, I don't think, anywhere near enough to actually beat a hateful idol on. Well, that's awkward. Maybe this deck's just not not powerful enough. Cartouche. Like, that's about as good of a start as our deck can get off to, and we can't even attempt oh my god, and it gets <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 we'll take it. Opponent hits us for nine. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Maybe this is just too fair. Too fair for Pioneer. Cycle into a land and scoop. I mean, I guess it's partly the matchup, but still. But still. Yeah, that was not even especially close. Uh, we're going to go down these Flame Blade Adapts, which probably aren't going to be able to attack anyway. Bring in a bit more removal, run it like that. So we get a bit more interaction. That wasn't even, that wasn't even close, though. That wasn't even, like, a little close. Hopefully this one goes better. All right. We get to play first. Reveal Jengatha, Mulligan. Any hand with a God Pharaoh's Gift in the starting hand is essentially a mulligan anyway. We will put a Zenith Flare to the bottom for now. Well, go, go, Flourishing Fox, I guess. Cast it, go. Definitely gonna need to cycle into some removal to have any realistic shot else out of life's bounty. Well, inspiring vantage, go to combat, uh, attack you. We would rather wait until next turn to cycle, but if we get to kill this I, uh, else, it's worth it. Opponent goes to 19. All right, here comes the auras. Pathway. All that glitters. Removal, please. Opponent gets and hits us. Gains back the life. 
All their threats have lifelink too, which is super obnoxious. Let's see. So play the land, cycle Ceridon, trigger, cycle healer, trigger, cycle wing shepherd, trigger, hollow one, cast it, hit you for four. Undid most of the life our opponent gained on turn two, so <laughs> score, I guess. No removal though. Right now, Hollow One can block, but it seems unlikely with our opponent having six cards in hand that it's gonna be able to block for long. Light pause. And Ethereal Armor makes it a seven, seven, gets a free aura. Well, at least death comes quickly against these aura decks. So that's a nine, nine first strike on turn three and lifelink also, opponent gets and hits us. Down to seven, we draw Desert Ceridon. We will cycle it, grow the fox. We were doing a good job of growing this fox too, but oh my goodness, it just does not matter. It just doesn't matter, cycle the stinger. We cannot outpace, we cannot outpace this Elsid. And even getting stuff back, yeah, we're just, I mean, we're, we're just dead. Well, that was quick and brutal. Budget magic time. We are cycling gifting in Pioneer and, huh? I mean, the sand looks fine. We will keep Fire Bluff in it, Canal for our opponent. Well, Mountain and Flame Bladed up, go. Opponent strangles and pathways and passes. Well, planes and flourishing fox, go. So in theory, this looks like a pretty solid hand. In theory, next turn, we double cycle hollow one. And then that hopefully gets us to Gate to the afterlife, opponent draws some cards, plays a mana, passes. Well, cycle the healer. Okay, opponent's going to kill the fox. So opponent's had all the removal, that's for sure. Cycle the fox, cliff top retreat, and hollow one. Pass the turn. Well, hollow one's big enough that our opponent shouldn't be able to easily kill it at least. Opponent, Ottawa, passes. Well, play the land, play gate to the afterlife. Do you have counters? Opponent, ops, looking for a counter. All right, well, go to combat, hit you with the hollow one. Hit you for four. Flame blade adapt, go. Well, let's even get the, uh, the God Pharaoh's gift going. No delve yet. What do you got about it? What do you got? Strategic planning. Definitely trying to fill the graveyard. And treasure cruise to draw three. Yep. Opponent plays a pathway and a thing in the ice. All right, let's draw some cyclers. That's a land. Well, play the land. Play gate to the afterlife. Go attacking. Hit ya. Well, so opponent's gonna flip the thing in the ice. That's bad. Strategic planning. Yep. Looking for the phoenixes. All right, mills a couple lands. Opponent draws three. <laughs> Opponent, seven cards in hand. Us, zero cards in hand. Opponent passes. We draw God Pharaoh's Gift, which is quite literally the worst draw in our deck. Well, we will take Jingatha. We will play a land. We will go to combat. We will go attacking. Opponent considers. So, looks to be trying to flip the thing in the ice here. Mm hmm. Mills in the gate. And considers to flip the thing in the ice and bounce our board. Yeah. We'll see if our. We'll see if our potential God Pharaoh's gifts are gonna be enough to keep us in this game with our opponent drawing uh, their entire deck here. Opponent, island, and thing in the ice number two. Okay, things are getting worse by the moment. Goes to combat, attacks. Well, we will block, do some looting. So we're gonna be able to potentially have two... Oh boy, those are bad draws. Okay. Opponent. <sighs> draws three. Uh... Uh, all right, we get a God Pharaoh's Gift. We untap. Opponent discarding to hand size after their third Ancestral Recall of the game. Well, we get a Flame Blade Adapt. The problem with this is our opponent's gonna flip the thing in the ice and undo all of our work anyway, so this actually doesn't, doesn't win us the game by any stretch. Go attacking. Also, we drew a lot of lands here. Was hoping we'd cycle into something more relevant. I guess we could have waited and cycled post Flame Blade, but again, it wouldn't have mattered because, because we just hit all lands anyway. Opponent. Fire Impulse to move closer to flipping the thing in the ice. Opponent's at three. Opponent, 
up. So thinking that it's gonna flip. If there's any good news, it's that our opponent has used all the treasure cruises. The problem is now they'll cast the extra turn delve spell. Uh, attack twice with thing in the ices and we will die. Opponent ops flips a thing in the ice. So 14 power, opponent goes to combat, hits us. All right, well, we will cycle a wing shepherd. Can we draw into non-lands, Desert Ceridon? Is there any way we can win this game? Well, play the land, go to combat. I mean, we gotta go for it. I'm assuming there's something that keeps us from winning here, but we'll see, wing shepherd. And uh, let's just get Dranith Healer. Go to combat, opponent, six cards in hand. Any of them answer our board. We go attacking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, we got Commandered. Overloaded Cyclonic Rift for the win. Well, uh, drawing your deck, every game is very powerful. I will admit. <laughs> uh, all right, well, go, go, Flourishing Foxes. Uh, all right, Inspire Advantage and Flourishing Fox. Gotta feed the removal. Opponent, Fire Bluff Canal. Oh, play a plane, go to combat, attack for one. These flourishing foxes could be really good if they lived. Look out, opponent going to take it. Well, we're gonna play a flourishing fox. Your go opponent, uh, opponent untaps, river glide pathway, thing in the ice. All right, that's pretty bad. Can we find removal? Cycle, grow the flourishing foxes into even more lands. Opponent passes, we draw Wing Shepherd while playing Inspiring Vantage. Go to combat, do some attacking. Does our opponent block? No. Well, cycle Wing Shepherd. Grow the foxes. Draw a card. Zenith Flare. Cycle Desert Ceridon. Grow the foxes. Can we hit a cycler, please? Yes. Cycle the fox. Grow the foxes. I mean, our opponent should not be able to flip Thing in the Ice this turn. They only have three mana. Our foxes are five fives, which means a lot of removal can't actually hit them. We got the Zenith Flare. This might just be fast enough to win. Like the foxes might have outscaled our opponent's removal here. Considers counter off Thing in the Ice. I mean, Zenith Flare's four. So a fox attack and Zenith Flare does close off the uh, close out the game. An opponent. All right, not fast enough this game. Well, run it back. <laughs> I guess that's what we're hoping for. Clonic Rift. Cyclonic Rift. Yeah, we got a mulligan that's tap lands. God Pharaoh's gift in hand is a mulligan. All right, well, this one we'll keep. We'll put the God Pharaoh's gift to the bottom. Questions on the on this one's gonna be, do we actually cycle into lands? Opponent plays a red source. Well, we draw land, which is good. Play the land, play the fox. Pass the turn. Opponent kills the fox. So off to a worse start than last game. Opponent, land, strategic planning. All right, so this means our opponent's gonna be able to start ancestral recalling, not good. We draw land, well, we will pl play the land and pass the turn. Opponent, strategic planning. All right, so opponent gets to start ancestral recalling now. Plays a land, draws a new hand. Well, we will cycle a wing shepherd. We will cycle a wing shepherd into not a ton, well, Clifftop Retreat and Gate to the Afterlife could be good eventually past the turn. Opponent plays a land. Strategic planning. So the problem with this is it just snowballs so ridiculously hard. That is the kind of the issue. Like once you start doing this, like you just keep doing this. Your your treasure cruises give you strategic plannings, which give you treasure cruises. It just keeps it just keeps going like this forever. Well, we'll take a Jengatha. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Plays a land. Thing in the ice. Opponent's going to pass. We draw a hollow one. Uh, not the most helpful here. We will cycle a hollow one into a desert Ceridon. Uh, we will play a gate to the afterlife. Opponent. Does your handful of action have an answer to the second gate to the afterlife? All right, opponent does not care. Setting up a cyclonic rift, perhaps. Opponent. Gonna flip the thing in the ice. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cast a spell, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, opponent untaps, treasure cruises, draws a new hand. Uh, opponent, nine cards in hand, and cast an anger of the gods to flip their thing in the ice. Yeah, that's how far ahead our opponent is. They can cast anger of the gods just to flip their thing in the ice. Gets in, hits us for seven, down to 13. 
Well, we will cycle a desert Ceridon. We will cycle a flourishing fox. We will crack a gate to the afterlife, search our library for a god pharaoh's gift. Uh, we will grab a wing shepherd. Boom, take that opponent. How would you like to take four? What do you say about that? Opponent goes to 16. Untaps, plays land. It's a cyclonic rift. Well, we will cycle a Duranith healer into a hollow one. Opponent gets in and hits us. We untap. We play a cast out to get rid of the thing in the ice for the moment. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps, plays a land, and going to pass for the time being. All right, we draw planes. Well, we'll play the planes, play gate to the afterlife, and pass the turn. Feels like another cyclonic rift is probably coming here at some point. Opponent untaps, plays a land, and passes. What are the chances of our opponent not having a handful of counter spells at this point? <laughs> um, hmm. Well, crack the gate to the afterlife, search our library for a god pharaoh's gift, go to combat, get back a Duranith healer, go to combat, uh, attack you. Drops to 12. All right, one of you got opponent. Uh, another Cyclonic Rift. Um, thing in the ice, discard a card. We'll discard a Jengatha. Opponent, do you have a counter? All right, no counter, so we're not quite dead yet. Opponent untaps. Plays a land. Well, we will cycle a Duranith Healer. We will cycle a Cast Out. Untap. Land. Oh, I'm worried about dying. All right, let's pass the turn. I mean, I think our hope is to win with Zenith Flare here, honestly. We got in a little bit of damage with the with our God Pharaoh's gifts before the, the great bouncing opponent considers. Ops. Plays a land. Well, cycle Duranith Healer. Cycle Duranith Stinger. Cycle Flourishing Fox. <laughs> cycle Cast Out. All right, I mean, the question is, can we resolve Zenith Flares? That is the one and only question. Play the land past the turn. Opponents at 12. We have 12 cycling cards in our graveyard. All we gotta do to win the game is resolve a Zenith Flare. If we do, we win. Opponent, passing. Are we gonna overcome our opponent drawing the most cards of all time? Zenith Flare you. 12 in the graveyard. Uh-huh. Okay, Disdainful Stroke. Uh, Zenith Flare you? How many counters do you have? Please die, please die. You Cyclonic Rifted us a bunch of times, please just die. <laughs> okay, opponent's gonna loot to try to find a counter. <laughs> we have officially reached desperation mode. Are we gonna overcome this? Found it, treasure token. Wow, oh my goodness, I cannot believe we won that game. I guess maybe Treasure Cruise doesn't need to be banned. Well, sweet, sweet, sweet. Budget magic time. We are pioneering this week with some cycling God Pharaoh's gift. Together at last. Do we even keep this? We have two cyclers. Oh, it's Anja Gotha. God Pharaoh's gift's kind of a dead card. So we're already kind of on a mulligan. You know what? I think we just mulligan. Eh, all right, this is fine. A little painful, but fine. Do we even want to play Flame Blade Adept? It can chip in for some damage. So we can turn one Flame Blade, turn two double cycle. Yeah, I think that's that's fine. Let's try it. The downside of Flame Blade is it does die to basically everything. But if we can chip in for some early damage, that'd be nice. Uh, Flame Blade Adept, go. Yeah. And then we are working towards the gate to the afterlife. In theory, we should cycle into lands, is it? Always is it. Well, play the land, cycle of Ceridon, grow the flame blade draw card, and cycle Stinger, grow the flame blade draw card. Uh, get in, hit ya. I don't know why this flame blade's so shadowy. About it, going to opt. These is it decks are so popular in Pioneer at the moment. I feel like I play against them all the time, which is kind of ridiculous because they just banned Expressive Iteration and they're still definitely the matchup I play most. Phoenix, is it Delver? Opponent opts. Well, opponent might be having some mana issues. All right, finds a red source. And all right, now we draw a mount. You know what? Our opponent's tapped out. I think this means we just gate to the afterlife. We're gonna take a turn off, get this down. Hopefully there's no main deck of braids. Sub right dragon. Gets and hits us. 
Well, we're not far away from turning this on. Play a flourishing fox. Cycle a Ceridon. Grow it. Play Clifftop Retreat. Cycle Wing Shepherd. Grow it. And pass the turn. We're set to get a God Pharaoh's uh, gift next turn. About it. Monastery Schwiftspiel. And of one mind to draw some cards. Opponent still really trying to hit their lands. I mean, I feel like I feel like a God Pharaoh's gift should be enough, right? Opponent. All right, drawing all the cards, growing the sprite dragons. Well, game on. Oh, hopefully they attack with the swift spear because we can actually just still cycle. Oh, come on, get in there. Get in there. You want that damage. We don't have a cycler. All right, opponent. Wise to our tricks. It's us to 14. One, two. Well, let's cycle the healer. Actually, let's cycle the fox. Grow the fox, draw a card. Untap. Another gate to the afterlife. Well, okay. Step one, gate to the afterlife. Get a God Pharaoh's gift. Go to combat. So Stinger gives us damage. Yeah, let's get Stinger. Go to combat. Attack ya. <laughs> Stinger is a 4-4. It's pretty good. Is our opponent going to block? Wow, they're not. All right, so we'll cycle a healer. Grow our stuff. Drain you. And yeah, I mean, cycle the stinger. Would have been better to hit an untap land, but cycle, cycle, grow, grow. Okay, there's an untap land. So worst case, oh, we should have played the advantage. Well, worst case, we can get another God Pharaoh's gift next turn. Abodent. I don't think they can 14 us here. We'll see. Well, it's in kind of a fragile spot. We don't have anything left to cycle, but we can get another threat back next turn. Zenith Flare is just straight up lethal if we hit it. I mean, hopefully we're good. Considers grows the dorks. I mean, Poet's gonna have to have quite the turn to actually kill us. We'll see if they can even, uh, can they even attack with everything without dying? Looks like a treasure cruise. Cruising for eight bruising. Yeah, well, opponent grows their dorks, grows their dorks. So that's up to eight. They have a land drop and maybe one more card. Okay, there's the land. Consider. Ah, uh, I guess they need like a burn spell that can hit our face and maybe they actually can just 14 us. That would be unfortunate. Wow. <laughs> That's Xaxes. All right. Treasure Cruise. Good, clean, fair magic. We go to 12. That's exactly 12. And we are officially dead. I did not think our opponent could kill us, but eh. That's Treasure Cruise for you. <laughs> it is a legal magic the gathering card, sort of. <laughs> for now. Well, we bring in a couple lightning axes, I guess. Cast out seems pretty slow. Sun Surge Champion's fine, but what do we even cut? We don't really, maybe Flame Blades? Let's try that. Flame Blades a little meh. All right, we get to play first. And I guess the lesson of that last game is not to underestimate the amount of damage that uh, is a Dex can deal. Oh, all right, I guess we'll keep this. We got the Zenith Flare this time, if we can resolve it. Uh, mountain and Flame Blade Adept, go. A Boon and Spire Bluff Canal and Removal. Well, Flame Blade Adept and Battlefield Forge. Go. Well, we've drawn every one of our Flame Blades. <laughs> Sideboard them out and draw them all. Plays a Steam Vents Untapped and Ledger Shredder. Ooh, Sprite Dragon, not a Ledger Shredder. Well, Cycle the Healer. Draw a Ceridon, opponent. Gets and hits us, sure, sure, sure. Down to 19. Well, cycle Ceridon. Hollow one would be a good draw here. Uh, Clifftop Retreat, cycle Wing Shepherd. Hollow one, we need a hollow one. Gate to the afterlife. Uh, we'll cycle Ceridon. Ugh, more lands, okay, not not the best. Well, get in and hit ya. Bone goes to 14, we're out of cyclers for the moment. One, two, three, four, five. Steam vents on tap, but goes to 12. Sprite dragon number two. I really don't want a Zenith Flare, a Sprite dragon, but that might be a thing we have to do. Opponent Ops gonna draw some cards. Yeah, we might just have to kill a Sprite dragon, unfortunately. Opponent puts it to the bottom. Gets and hits us. Sure, 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 sure. Down to 14. Lightning Axe. Well, all right. Let's play this on white. Zenith Flare Sprite Dragon. Gain a bit of life. Itch ya. We need one more creature in the graveyard to gate to the afterlife God Pharaoh's gift. About it. 
undaps. More ops. If they kill our flame blade adapt, then we are uh, all clear. Opponent gets and hits us. Down to 15 and passes. Ceridon. Well, uh, cycle Ceridon. Grow the flame blade. Cycle Stinger. Grow the flame blade. Play a mountain. Go to combat hedge, yeah. All right, opponent goes to eight. Oh, we want to kill this sprite dragon, but I'm concerned about counters. Well, this match has been super close. Ship and reef for our opponent. Reckless Rage. Well, all right, if there was ever a time to go for it, it's going to be now. Uh, discard the land. Try to kill the sprite dragon. We can pay for a spell pierce. All right, sprite dragon down. Well, now the question is going to be, does our opponent have a counter? If we can gate to the afterlife God Pharaoh's gift and get a creature, we're kind of in good shape. I mean, I guess we could also not go for it. Our opponent's only got a soul scar mage at the moment. Opponent passes. Do we go for it? Oh, opponent's been careful to leave mana up. I think we're going to take Chingatha. Pass the turn. Actually, you know what? Let's cycle this now. Let's cycle the fox. Well, Lightning X is nice in case things go horribly wrong. Like if our opponent has some ridiculous string of spells, we can kill the Soul Scar Mage. Boy, treasure cruise. Opponent goes to combat, opponent attacks. Down to 11, opponent passes. Jingatha, cast it. Still trying to play around our opponent's likely counters. Pass the turn. Reckless Rage. Shrinks Jingatha and Ops. I mean, at some point, we're just going to have to go for it, knowing that our opponent have a lot of ways to blow us out. Monastery Swift Spear. Opponent goes to combat. Opponent gets in, hits us. Okay, down to eight. Opponent passes. Well, one, two, three, gate to the afterlife. Sack it. God Pharaoh's gift. Please don't kill it. Ottawa to bounce it, okay. Well, that works. Uh, Well, we gotta pass the turn. Yeah, we might be dead. Oh boy, Treasure Cruise is so busted. Opponent untaps. Of one mind to draw two cards. Opponent ops to draw some cards. Strangle. Well, discard the God Pharaoh's gift, kill the Soul Scar, hopefully. Okay, so we're not fully dead yet. <laughs> Another treasure cruise to refill that. Yep. Opponent plays a land, goes to combat. Well, how about top decking a Zenith Flare? That would be, that would be pretty good. We got four of them, in, or three of them in our deck. They would just win us the game. Soulscar Mage comes back again. We can cycle once at least. Oh, no, there it is. Oh, no. Okay, we got to cycle first. Cycle Healer and Zenith Flare you. Well, our opponent answered. <laughs> answered the God Pharaoh's gift with Ottawa, but the Zenith Flare comes through. Ah, not bad, not bad. Do we want to change anything else? Flame Blade just dies to everything. You know what? Go down the Flame Blade, go up the Gate to the Afterlife, and ooh, let's just, or Sun, well, not Gate to the Afterlife, Sun Scourge Champion, and just run it like that, I think. Reveal Jingatha. We probably mulligan this. God Pharaoh's Gift's already a mulligan. We only got one land. Well, that's a lot of lands. Okay. Mountain to the bottom. Well, we'll see. Only one cycler's not the best. None of the bugbear and a bonus passes. Well, planes go. I think we'd rather cycle than, we'd rather cycle than play the flourishing fox, which I think is incredibly likely to die. Den of the bugbear and young pyromancer. That's an issue. Oh no, another land. Drannis Stinger. Well, play the land past the turn. This Pyromancer is going to uh, go off. We do not have a way of dealing with it. A better adapts. Steam Vents untapped. Monastery Swift Spear. Considers. Goes attacking. Not feeling especially confident. This Unscored Champion is something. Opponent Spike Field Hazard. So it might seem like, oh, our opponent's only got three cards in hand, but remember, you gotta do the treasure cruise math. Oh no, another land. Yeah, this is, this is the fizzle. The way the, the cycling deck fizzles the most is honestly just by 
by cycling into a ton of lands. That is the the easiest way for this deck to do nothing. Well, we play the Sunskirt Champion, we pass the turn. The gate to the afterlife is nice, but we need many more creatures for it to actually for it to actually work. Opponent considers. Haven't done much with Hollow One, have we? Reckless Rage. Mm-hmm. Kills a bunch of stuff, goes to combat attacks, hits us for a billion, opponent passes. Well, play the Clifftop Retreat, get back the Sunskirt Champion, discard the Mountain. I mean, we go up to 13 temporarily, but oh boy, opponent's got a huge board here. Opponent, play with fire on the Sunskirt Champion. Yeah, we don't really have a way to deal with this whole board. Zenith Flare can snipe a thing, but. Play with fire, kills the Sunskirt Champion, makes a token. I so we got one turn to, oh, there's, hmm, and then Treasure Cruise. I mean, we have one turn to draw something. The problem is we don't have anything that we can draw. Yeah, Treasure Cruise is so busted. Well, that was close. Opponent definitely snowballed that last game hard. Let's play some non it decks. <laughs> Budget magic time. We are playing some cycling God Pharaoh's Gift in Pioneer. And double tab land, kind of annoying, but we'll keep this. I mean... We got a way to get God Pharaoh's Gift. We got some Cyclers. We got a Zenith Flare. Like, other than the fact our lands are very tapped, seems like a pretty a pretty reasonable hand. Uh, all right, Clifftop Retreat, go. Then another Bugbear. Draneth Stinga. Well, let's begin the cycling with a Wing Shepherd. Clifftop Retreat, go. So we are gonna wanna cycle into a land or two. Zenith Flare, if this is mono red, should be very helpful. As long as our opponent doesn't have a way to prevent life gain. Mountain. Eidolon. Well, we will cycle Drana Stinger. <laughs> all right. Well, we're getting all the we're getting all the cliff top retreats out of the way. Play the tap land past the turn. Opponent goes to combat. Gets in, hits us down to eighteen. Probably setting up a light up the stage. I would assume. Land and Chandra. I mean, that is a bit of an issue. Chandra takes up Pingsus, makes mana, and a play with fire. Opponent's also kind of killing themselves here a bit. Well, we untap, we draw. Flame Blade, not ideal. Well, cycle cast out, play the planes, play a Flame Blade adapt, take two, and pass the turn. So right now, Zenith first five. Opponent takes up Chandra, gets another one. Ram and Amp Rewins. And Wild Slash on the Flame Blade, okay? So Flame Blade down, gets in, hits us, down to 11. Although that's a little bit deceptive because we are going to gain a bunch of life here at some point. Uh, cycle the Stinger, untap. Play the land, one, two, three, four. Zenith Flare the Chandra. Possible we should have just went face face, but and then I think we do play that one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think we do have to play this flame blade because if flame blade dies, then we can get to the afterlife of God Pharaoh's gift and start getting stuff back. Opponent play with fire, kills the flame blade. Sure, sure, sure. Well, hopefully we're at 14. Hopefully that's good enough. Opponent bone crush a giant. Sure, sure, sure. It's us. Down to 12. Well, untap. One, two, three. Gate to the afterlife. Down to 10. God Pharaoh's Gift. From the library. This should be pretty good. But it's got one card in hand. So get the God Pharaoh's Gift. Go to combat. We will get back the Wing Shepherd, I think. Vigilance is nice. So get back Wing Shepherd. Hit you for four. Opponent goes to six, and hopefully we're set up to win next turn. Opponent on taps. They need a way to deal with the Wing Shepherd and extra damage somehow. Swift Spear. Opponent goes to four. Okay. One card in it. I think we got him. I think the Zenith Flare came through. And the God Pharaoh's This is kind of the full, the full Monty of Cycling Gift. We got the God Pharaoh's Gift, and we got the Zenith Flare life gain. Goes to combat. I don't know how our opponent gets out of this, though. And opponent agrees and scoops it up. And that was... That's what we wanted to do. That's what we wanted to do. We got the gift. We got the Zenith Flare. Okay, now we get to bring in Sunskirt Champion. Perhaps Lightning Axe. What do we go down is the real question. It might be Flame Blades. Flame Blade feels a little weak because Flame Blade does die to all of the play with fires and, and whatnot. 
and it doesn't cycle. So let's go down the flame blade. I don't think our goal is to out aggro our opponent in this matchup. I think our goal is to out Godfrey's gift or Zenith flare them. Fox is good. That can grow outside of the range. Sun Scourge Champion seems pretty helpful. We do gotta be able to keep life gain hate off the battlefield as well. I wonder if they're, hmm. Maybe we should be going cast outs rather than lightning axes. Cast out cycle, which is relevant. And we don't know what kind of life gain can hate our opponent would have. It, it could be creatures, it could be enchantments. Let's let's run it like that. Reveal Jingatha. Yeah, I mean, we'll keep this. See how fast of a start our opponent gets off to. Opponent, mountain, and monastery swifts here. All right, pretty fast. Gets and hits us. Do we play the flourishing fox or do we cycle the flourishing fox? Yeah, let's play it. I think. The odds of us hitting another cycle, uh, cycler is pretty high to play hollow one on three. Unlicensed Hearst, okay. So that is good at shutting down our graveyard stuff. That's going to be an issue. Opponent gets in, hits us. Sure, sure, sure. Well, inspiring Vantage. Do we go attacking? I think we do. Hit you for one. I don't think we're blocking this turn. Yes, Hearst is gonna be an issue. That's gonna make our Zenith Flares a lot less good. I don't think we can cycle enough to overcome it naturally. And it's gonna get big. We gotta find a cast out, basically. Opponent, Lightning Strike on the Fox. Yeah, so there's no way we can cycle past that. Well, I mean, I guess at least it's not a Lightning Strike going at our face. That's something. Gonna hit us down to 15. So depending on what we draw, we might just, uh, we might just get to the afterlife here, down to 15, phone of passes, hollow one. Yeah, I think we, we need one more cycler. All right, so we, we play the land, we play gate to the afterlife and take our beats. Gate to the afterlife does draw us cards. That is, or uh, does gain us life, which is relevant and loot. So it does kind of draw us cards. So what we want to set up here is, is double hollow one next turn. That is, that's what we're trying to get to. It does require drawing another cycler. So we get our draw for our turn. We get a draw from Drannis Stinger. If we hit any cycler, hollow one X2 can come down, which should be decent. Unchained Berserker, sure. Den of the Bugbear. Worst case, I guess we can play one hollow one, which is not as exciting, but it's still something. And we're still at 14. Opponent gets in, hits us. And all right, Spike Field Hazard. Opponent's just trying to get in some damage. We drop to 12. Cycler, please. All right, that works. So cycle Wing Shepherd. Play Clifftop Retreat. Cycle Duranus Stinger. Hollow one. Hollow one. Pass the turn. We'll see. So this hearse is going to make it very difficult to turn on Gate to the Afterlife. But the Gate to the Afterlife, at least if stuff dies, will let us loot away this Zenith Flare that's not going to do much, I don't think. It looks like we have stopped the aggression for now, at least. A cast out to get rid of the hearse would also be pretty good. The downside is I don't think we can really attack at the moment. And cycling grows the hearse, which is super awkward. A opponent goes to combat. I mean, if they attack, we are going to block. We're getting enough mana that we can just hard cast our, our janky cyclers. And opponent passes, we draw. A flourishing fox. Well, play, flir uh, play the mountain. Play the flourishing fox. Get in with one hollow one. Opponent takes it. All right, and we will pass the turn. Opponent, gonna keep growing the hearse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now the hearse is big enough to stop hollow ones. Really would like to find the cast out. Although if our opponent starts attacking with the hearse, that does mean it's tapped out. Play with fire on a hollow one. Okay. What is this, double play with fire? Strangle the hollow one. All right, that's not ideal. So we get to loot, gain a life, discard Zenith Flare, and a Saga. All right, so there was our opponent's big turn. Goes to combat, attacks, attacks. Yeah, sadly, I think we got a block with the Fox. Loot with Gate to the Afterlife. Discard a Gate to the Afterlife. Yeah, maybe that attack was too greedy. Well, we will play Dranith Healer. Dranith Stinger. Pass the turn. No attacks. Oh, this hearse is going to be so big. Yeah, opponent eats some cards. Takes up the saga. Swift spear off the top. Well, that gives our opponent something to do with the saga. Can we find the cast out? That's the real question. I guess next turn we can get Jingatha in hand if we don't find anything better. At what point does our opponent start attacking with the hearse is the real question. One, two, three, four, five. So it'd be a seven, seven. If they attack with it, we would just throw our entire team in front of it. 
Wow. All right. Opponent crews it up. Goes to combat. I mean, I think this is totally worth it. We're not missing anything, right? I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, block, block, block. I think this attack is too greedy. No cards in hand. What am I missing? All right. Block, block, block. I mean, we got to get rid of the hearse. This hearse is the bane of our existence. This is also going to let us fill the graveyard. Maybe we can eventually get the God Pharaoh's gift going now. Also I means Zenith Flare could be a thing eventually. All right. So kills the hollow one, kills the stinger or healer. We get to double loot, discard the land, Ooh. discard the gate to the afterlife. Healer, well, uh, cycle healer, ping you. Cycle wing shepherd, ping you. Ooh. Cycle dranith healer, ping you. Cast a hollow one, pass the turn. Okay, that was a decent turn. We're one creature short, although it's worth mentioning, once this flips, our creatures from the battlefield are not gonna die the way we'd like them to. Opponent hits a land. Fires up down on the bugbear. All right, opponent's going aggro. Opponent attacks with everything. All right, so we need to kill the den of the bugbear. Kill this thing. Three, four, five, six, we take seven. Down to five. Any cycling creature would be spectacular. Land. So we block here. One, two. If our opponent draws a burn spell, we're pretty dead. The question is, can we cycle cast out or do we need to actually use it as removal? What we really want is to get the gate to the afterlife, to get the God Pharaoh's gift. That's our, that's our best out. But if we cycle and hit a land, we block here. We're dead to basically anything. I think we got to do it. I think we got to do it. I think we, oh, okay. Well, that is, yeah. Now we're dead to pretty much all the cards in our opponent's deck. Land means we're dead to Ramadan Bruins. Burn spell means we're dead to creatures. Opponent goes to combat, opponent attacks. Well, yeah, I assume we're dead now. Kill the Unchained Berserker. Oh, wrong time to fizzle. Opponent drew a lightning strike. All right. All right, all right, well, we're on the play for game number three. Our opponent had the Graveyard Hate on turn two, which did a lot of work for them, even if it ended up fizzling eventually. All right, run it back. Run it back, we're on the play. I feel like this should be a good matchup for us. I really do. If we lose this one, then, well, you know, it's magic. You never know. Even your good matchups, you lose a pretty high percentage of the time. All right, we get to play first. Reveal Jengatha. All right, we'll keep it. I like this Unscourge Champion. Play the land. Play the Flourishing Fox, pass the turn. Opponent, Den of the Bugbear, and Soul Scar Mage. Uh, Clifftop Retreat, attack ya. Well, cycle the Ceradon. Grow the Fox. Cycle the Cast Out. Grow the Fox. Opponent goes to 17, pass the turn. Land for our opponent. And there's a Lightning Strike. Sure. Gets in for two. Well, play the land. Yay to the afterlife. Go. Opponent. Ramanamp rewins. And stomps. Sure. Down to 16. Down to 14. Ooh, light up the stage. All right. What do they hit? Mountain and Swift Spear. Okay. Opponent hits us. Down to 13. Well, I think we need to play the land on white. Play a Sun Scourge champion. Gain a bit of life. Get a blocker past the turn. Right now, we got two creatures in the graveyard. Two. We need several more. Opponent, land, swift spear. So the good news is we do have that gate to the afterlife. All right, oh, wow. Oh dear, oh my goodness. That is the perfect removal spell for our opponent. Well, cycle this wing shepherd. Yeah, that might be a big problem. Oh no, into the third gate of the afterlife. And oh, they have this, oh no. Oh no, lava coils a nightmare. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna lose. Opponent hits us. Yeah, that's, that is, uh, that is game. Gate to the afterlife, play a land. Oh, wow. That, that is, that is gonna be it. Yeah, the exile of the lava coil was really, really good for our opponent. And I mean, I guess we ran pretty poorly. All the gate to the afterlifes. Yeah, so opponent gets the den of the bugbear. And it would take some sort of miracle to, to get back in this game now. Even if we draw cyclers, I don't think it's enough. We drop to two, we draw a cycler, we will cycle it. Well, here they are, too late to the party, but 
Yeah, and there's the fizzle. Five in the graveyard, that lava coil. Well, maybe this deck isn't that competitive. Ah, oh, it's such a neat idea though. Well, we'll see. Losing to that does make me worried because that seems like it should be a good matchup, but ah, game one, we crushed them. Game two, the graveyard hate came through. Game three, just not the kind of draw we need. Uh, the top of our deck was a ton of lands and a ton of gate of the afterlifes, and our opponent had exile base removal. Well, okay. So what did we learn this week about cycling gifted Pioneer? And overall, the deck was okay. We did get some wins with it, but overall, a little bit less than 50% as far as our win rate. And I gotta say, oh boy, we played so many super ridiculously close matches with this deck that it was pretty brutal that we didn't post a better record. But really, the deck's interesting. It can do really powerful things. We got to see some of the, the free win aspects of the deck, like a make a huge furnishing fox, or we burn out the is it deck with double zenith flare out of the blue by surprise, taking over the game, or God Fair's gift to get all of our stuff back. So the deck certainly has a lot of power. It also has a couple of issues. And the biggest one by far is consistency. When you think about the plan of our deck, it's essentially to just cycle, 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 cycle. And what fizzles our plan? is mostly hitting too many lands. We had a lot of weird land issues with this deck. We have 20 lands altogether. We had some games where we got stuck on like one land and no matter how much we cycled, couldn't find land number two. And then we had some games where we'd have a few cyclers, a few lands, and then we just cycle into lands. And we end up with like 10 lands and don't hit enough cyclers and kind of fizzle that way. So for some reason, that was like the biggest issue we had. And I think the solution is cycling lands. The problem is we don't really have good cycling lands in the pine your format. It might be worth considering trying some of the deserts, even though they're two mana to cycle, they're one color, they come into play tapped. So they're not good cycling lands by any stretch. But if we ever get like legit cycling lands in Pioneer, that would really, really solve the deck's biggest issue, which was just that land stuff, like cycling into too many lands or not finding lands. But I really like the overall game plan of the deck. And I think the deck is in a reasonably good place. Like it's got this cool late game engine that can be really hard to beat. It's got Zenith Flare that wins by surprise. It can play like a creature deck. The other big issue we ran into was graveyard hate. And it might seem counterintuitive that graveyard hate would be such a big deal for us. And in some sense, it's not. Like we can win by flame blade adapting and flourishing foxing and hollow wanting and trying to win like a creature deck. But if we do get hit by a rest in peace or an unlicensers, it does cut off our most explosive pathways to victory. It's really kind of tricky to actually get 20 damage with our creatures in this deck. It does happen on occasion. Sometimes we play Flourishing Foxes and Flame Bladed Apps and make them big and our opponent can't answer them and we win or Hollow Ones can take over the game. But more often than not, our creature's getting like 10 damage, maybe a little bit more than that. And then we're trusting that a Zenith Flare will get in those last points of damage and close out the game. Or the God Pharaoh's Gift will come down and start giving us free hasty four force to get in those last points of damage and close out the game. But that didn't actually happen if our opponent had Graveyard Hate. Graveyard Hate shuts down both of those plans. A Rest in Peace means Zenith Flare is dealing zero damage. It means God Pharaoh's Gift is a dead card. And Gate to the Afterlife is a dead card. So that was a bit of a concern. So I think more answers to graveyard hate might be worth it as well. Technically, cast out can be an answer, but maybe we need some wear tears in the sideboard or something, some better answer. And I gotta say the sideboard uh, maybe could be improved. I'm not 100% sold on Jingatha being necessary in the deck. When I was thinking about cards that I might wanna add to the deck, maybe some more removal for go wide decks. Uh, we saw a couple of times, if our opponent can build a big board full of creatures, they can just kind of go around our threats to some extent if we don't find the Zenith Flare on time or whatever. So like Swelter Sons or Settle the Wreckage could be really sweet upgrades to the deck, but they don't work with Jingatha. Jingatha was fine. I mean, it's a free-ish card that you get access to, which is inherently powerful, but it doesn't really do anything specific with our deck. I guess we can discard it to get to the afterlife to get a creature in the graveyard or whatever, but it's kind of just a 5-5. Five five. So I almost wonder if cutting Jingatha, so we can have access to some double mana color cards in this sideboard, the Settle the Wreckage, the Sweltering Sons, or maybe even the main deck. Like I could see playing Sweltering Sons in the main deck in this deck. Worst case, we can cycle it, not efficiently, but it can be cycled. Best case, it's a card that's gonna save us against some of the goes go wide decks. So I wonder if dropping Jingatha and having a little bit more flexibility might be worth it in the deck. So overall, that cycling gift. The deck is sweet. If you got the cycling cards from standard, it's gonna be super cheap and easy to put together. And it definitely can win some games. Although, as I said, overall in our experience at least, a little bit less than 50% win rate, which isn't super ideal. 
But really, the price is right. The deck is fun. You might already have the cards. Plus, God Fair was gifted Hollow One. Oh, when it works, it's just so, so sweet and different than what anyone else is doing at Pioneer. So that cycling gift, that's been our budget magic for this week. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon.